Hello class, uh, my name is Mr. Ware and I'll be teaching um, some speed mitten skills today. Um, we're going to be focusing in particular on the backhand. So just, um, j just a quick show of hands. How many of you have actually heard of speed mitten? Keep your hands raised if you have. And if you actually have not, but would be excited to raise your other hand. All right, now everybody just raise their hand all at once. Okay. All right, so now, from my empirical observations, I've seen that everyone has their hand raised. So that can only mean that everyone's excited about it and everyone's heard about it. So, all right, without further ado, this is Speed Mitten. Um, for our instant activity, I, I want everybody just to take a racket of theirs and then a birdie, and all we're gonna be doing is just keeping it up just like this and try to keep it up as much as you can. You guys will probably do a lot better than I can do, but you get the gist of it. So try to keep it up as many times as you can. And once you get really good at it, just try to be consecutive and build up like a continuous uh, kind of like count, just going with it. Um, so see how many you can do. All right, so um, once you have that instant activity done, um, we will be moving on to our skill practice. So I want everybody just to partner up, get, get into like a quick little, quick little group. Um, and all we're gonna be doing is one student is just gonna take uh, the birdie and then they're gonna toss it to the other student. Um, and all you're gonna do is just hit it back to your partner um, and try to just keep like a steady technique going, like try to just make sure that your technique is the same every single hit. Um, so it's gonna look something like this. I'm gonna have someone toss it to me and I'm gonna hit it back right to the partner. Oh, look at that partner over there, whoa. Hitting it back, there we go. All right, okay. So you kinda get the gist of it. Um, so we're just gonna be tossing it to our partner and we're gonna toss it 10 consecutive times and then we're gonna switch and then your other partner just can practice as much as they want. Um, so if you've already noticed, speed mitten is a lot like tennis and a lot like badminton just combined. Um, but the only difference with speed mitten is that it's in the name. It's gonna be very, very fast. It's a lot faster than tennis. And badminton is a little slower just because you want it to float in the air a little bit more. Speed mitten is kind of like a direct hit towards your opponent. It's gonna be more of a direct line. All right, so for our first activity, um, we are gonna be doing something called fun in the sun. All right, so um, each partner will have um, a birdie, and so they're gonna be in a set of cones, um, and the partner, so, so you guys are gonna partner up, and you'll have a set of four cones right here, and the partner, one partner will be in the set of cones, just just like this right here, and they'll have a birdie, just like this, and one, and th they'll be tossing it to a person in front of them, so you toss it to them, and then they have to hit it back, and they have to try to hit it in these four cones, and once they actually do hit it in the four cones, then they get a letter of fun in the sun. So if you hit it into the cones, you get an F, if you get, if, if you get another one, you get a U, and so on. So. You're just trying just to spell out fun in the sun. And once you do, then you can just have more fun in the sun and try to hit more into the cones. Um, so from there, um, I'm just gonna have everyone practice, just try to get a feel for it. Um, and please make sure while you're doing this, um, keep in mind three cues, um, just, just that I want you guys to remember. So. I want you guys to keep your knees bent. I want you to keep your eye on the birdie and um, to have flat forearms. Or, um, so instead of, uh, actually, uh, not, not, not flat forearms, but we are gonna be using, um, we're, we're, we're actually gonna be using the back side of the mitt. So we're gonna be using just the center of the back side and you want to have your stance on your weaker side so you can use your stronger hand in the back hand. So, I have a little fun game with myself so I would have a partner right here 
they would toss it to me and boom look at that already got just a birdie in the cones um, but that would mean that I would get an F so let's try another one you can even back up try to make it a little harder for all you athletes out there try to hit it eh, kind of that was on the line um, but yeah just try to hit it in all the cones um, is um, we're gonna be moving on to the second activity. Um, and so the second activity is just, we're gonna be, all we're gonna do from there is, so, so we're just gonna be focusing on the motor objective of this activity. So take your fun, put it back in the sun, and we're just going to do a quick review. Um, so I just told you uh, to keep your knees bent, have your eye on the birdie, and to make contact with the center of the racket because that's where you're going to get the most power. Um, but I'm just going to have all of you guys, um, after you finish the fun in the sun activity, um, I want you guys just to toss it to each other for 10 tosses and try to repeat the cues back to each other. So I'm gonna toss it to my partner, they're gonna hit it back, but while I toss it to them, I'm gonna remind them, all right, keep your knees bent, eye on the birdie, and hit in the center of the racket, um, just to make sure that their developing, development is furthered, um, just as far as their, their speed in the game. So, all right. Um, so from there, all we're gonna do, um, so this is my second activity, um, and it's called the partner passing the challenge. Um, so with a one-handed under toss, um, begin hitting the birdie um, back and forth with each other and count how many times um, you, you can hit the birdie back and forth consecutively. Um, so for the student uh, demonstration, I want you to see how many times um, you can hit the birdie back and forth and make sure to count, that's, that's a huge thing. Um, so all you're gonna do from here, um, if I could have a volunteer from the class, just come, come right up, uh, we can try to knock this thing out. Um, so I wanna see how many times I can hit it to my very good imaginary friend. We'll just we'll call him Bob for now. So there we go, whoa, oh, good hit Bob. Let's go, yep, oh God. And that was three, all right, you guys can do way better than, than I did. But that was kind of Bob's fault. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to call him any Bob, but... Um, all right, so... Um, so wh while you're doing this partner passing challenge, um, just try to remember three cues. So I want you to keep it in the center of your racket. I want you to move your feet with the birdie. And I also want you to, the, to pass to the center of, the, of your partner's body, just so they can get the biggest hit, um, but you also have to remember with each hit, you have to hit with backhand. So you want to hit either to the center of the body or to the left. So I'm going to get the birdie. Boom. Look at that. I can just backhand it nice and easy. Bob's backhand is a little better, but that's okay. Um, all right. So we're just going to try to hit that back and forth for as long as we can. Um, and beginning learners can hit the birdie um, once to their hands before passing it. So if you guys are really struggling with this, all you need to do is just, when you receive the birdie, backhand it and don't catch it. No, um, tr try to catch it, um, but you can just retrieve it really easy. Backhand it, catch it, and then set it up, backhand it to your partner. So. Pretty easy stuff, um, but for beginners, um, I would definitely try to retrieve it first just so you can really work on refinement and technicality of the movement. Um, all right, all right, so for our next activity, um, we're gonna be having a little more fun. We're gonna try to spice it up just a bit. 
Um, this one's called Bullseye. Um, so I'm actually, um, so each pair of students will have one set of cones um, and the tosser will move to a different, um, different spots in front of and slightly to the side of the performing partner. Um, the performing partner is trying to hit the birdie so it lands in the, um, in the set of cones um, and it is very important that students move their feet and pass to the center of their partner's body. So, um, all I'm gonna be doing is we're gonna set up the cones. However, well, wherever you are as far as like speed mitten difficulty, like if you go here, advanced learners, beginner learners, um, the more advanced learners are gonna be making their bullseye a little bit smaller. The beginner learners, you can make your bullseye as big as a football field. So, um, here's my little bullseye, and I would have a partner right there um, who would either toss it from right in front of me or toss it to the side of me just to work on little variations I could have in the game. Um, but all I'm gonna be doing is just backhanding it and try to hit it in the bullseye. Didn't get it that time, but once you get it, that's one bullseye, and from your partner in you, you're gonna try to keep track and you're gonna have a good little friendly competition going. Um, so, try to beat Bob. Oh, Bob's been destroying me this whole time. It's okay. All right, one bullseye. There we go, that's one bullseye. Okay, so just try to hit it in between the cones, try to count it up and compare your score with your partner right after. Um, see who has the better score. Um, all right, so that is our bullseye activity. Um, I wanna see you guys just practice that for a little bit. Um, but, um, all right, so for the variations, I should mention that um, the beginners should have a birdie tossed only slightly from the side and, adver and advanced, um, they should have lower tosses from farther away and from different angles. So, say I'm a little, little, little beginner, beginner learner, um, I would have a toss from right here and it would only probably go about maybe five feet. Um, for advanced learners, you wanna toss it from wherever, throw Hail Marys to whoever the advanced learners are in the class. Um, but let's say I'm a beginner, toss it, only comes from about five feet. I still miss, there you go, all right. Um, so for advanced learners, you want to have it probably more from the side, have different angles, um, so you want to toss it, and then the advanced learners will take over, shaboom, there you go, bullseye. All right, so going from there, um, I just want you guys just to practice that for a little bit. Um, and make sure while you're hitting it, um, just so you get a better, um, better refinement for what you're what you're doing. I want you to keep your knees bent, um, keep your eye on the birdie, and try to hit it in the center of your racket. Um, and then act like there's a partner right there, and you're hitting it towards the midline of their body. So midline being just the medial border of your whole body. So um, so yeah, th that's all you pretty much need to do but just try to hit backhand every time, right there. And, all right, so, got our little bit of fun in the sun, got our bullseye going. Um, so now, just, uh, all, right. Um, all right, so, um, I just wanna give you guys one non-example of how to do that. So just from here, um, a non-example of how not to do bullseye is if your partner is chucking your birdie um, overhand and right at you, that's not gonna help anything. That's not gonna help their development. And um, you can do it for very advanced learners, but just for now, let's try to keep it more underhand, try to take it slow with everyone. Um, so that's how not to throw the birdie, um, how not to hit it. So we're always trying to hit backhand, right? 
we're always trying to hit it just like that, back at the center of the racket. Um, you never want to hit forehand, to just be just like that. And you never want to hit overhead, which is, yeah, I mean, going forward, of course. Um, so these are non-examples of how to hit it, um, as far as non-examples of your stance. So you want more of a power stance with your dominant foot forward, um, just so you can lead with your dominant hand when you're actually hitting a backhand. Um, so you want a strong stance, keep the knees bent, um, but if you have your stance forward and you try to hit it that way, you won't get nearly as much power just from the biomechanics of it. So if you're trying to force it just like that, then you're not gonna get enough leverage and then your arm is just gonna be willy-nilly. So you wanna keep stance this way on your weak side, lead with your strong hand, just like that. Perfect. All right, so that is pretty much the perfect way to hit it. Um, as far as your partner, they should always be feeding you very helpful um, aiding kind of cues. Um, so as far as this, they should be telling you knees bend, center of the racket, eye on the birdie, um, and that you should be leading with power with your dominant hand. Um, so that's pretty much all just for the non-examples. Um, just one more quick example for how to do it. So let's say I'm an advanced learner. I showed you the beginner learner last time, but let's say I've got a Hail Mary of all birdies way back here and I try to hit it. So this is, it's probably easier with a partner just so you have more time to hit it. Um, but all you basically wanna do, eye on the birdie, knees bend, you want your stance on your weaker side, just like that. So, and if you wanna add a little more power into the movement, all you need to do is add more of a swing. So instead of just kind of fluttering at the birdie, um, you wanna more, try to add more of a swing, swing just like that. So it won't be as tiring for you, and you can have time to reload for when the next time the opponent hits uh, the birdie towards you. All right, so let's try to play a little bullseye. Um, I'll, I'll show you guys, I'll keep reminding you guys of the cues along the way, um, just to make sure that you guys are kept on track. All right, so one hit. Let's see if I can beat you guys. Let's go. That's one. That's one more than all of my imaginary students have. Let's go, beginner learner. Oh, almost, almost. Advanced learner, go. Almost, almost. Pretty small bullseye, but it's still good. That is a non-example. <laughs> um, right. Let's do three more, and then we'll try to wrap it up with a little bit of closure. Last one, make it count. Knees bent, eye on the birdie, center of the ground. Swing follow through. Overshot it just a little bit. It's okay though. In a game setting, that would probably land in the opponent's area, but it's okay. But bullseye is just meant for precision and trying to basically get you to be a lot more precise than you would be in a game, just so you're a lot more prepared for the game. So, um, so yeah, that, that pretty much wraps up. Um, bullseye, fun in the sun. Hope you guys had fun in the sun. Um, but that is the speed mitten lesson on the backhand hit. Um, so now I just have 
a few closure questions for you. Um, the first being, all right, so I just want everyone to actually partner up first. Um, so if I could have everyone kind of gather around me just so I can see you guys, um, but I'm gonna have you guys get into partners and then each partner will be asking whatever question I tell you guys. Um, so first question, should you be hitting the birdie with your, um, with your weaker side stance? I don't know. Da, na, na, na. Um, and you guys have to answer in the form of a question. That's, that's mandatory. It's a requirement. All right. Um, so, big answer is yes, you should be. Because when you actually hit with your weaker side, you're going to be leading with your dominant hand. Um, so, that just basically means that your dominant foot will be forward and you'll be leading with your dominant hand. Um, all right. Second question for everybody. All right. Why or why not? I know, I know, elaborates on that question a lot. Um, so does anybody know why we do that? Why we actually do go on our weaker side? Um, so it's basically just so we have the optimal amount of, um, of hip power you would need for an actual game setting. Because in an actual game setting, the cones are gonna be set about 40 feet apart. Um, so you want as much power as you can going into that backhand. Um, just because the backhand, it's pretty weak. It's not, it's, it's not as strong as forehand and it's not as powerful as overhead. So backhand's the one little precision move that you need in a really tight game setting. Um, all right, so third question. Why is it important to keep your knees bent? Anybody tell me? Anybody at all? And you guys, if you guys do a demonstration, extra credit. Um, all right, so um, we do keep our knees bent because it adds not only more stability, um, but it adds just more mobility without, or like w whenever you're switching stances, whenever you're switching hits, it, it just adds a lot more mo mobility and you can sit in the stance a lot longer. Um, so if you had to do leg straight, you're walking around pin legs all game, you're, you're not going to be able to bend over super easily. You're not going to be able to like dig and you're probably not going to be able to jump um, just for like an overhead hit. So keep your knees bent, more stable and a lot more safe too for your own body. All right. Um, so for the fourth question. Um, so for the fourth question, um, we're going to be, so where should you pass the birdie. Um, so remember how we were doing that in the activities, like in Fun in the Sun and Bullseye, um, you always want to act like you're going to be passing to this part of your partner's body. Which part is that? All right. Let's give you guys a hint. Oh no. Oh no. Ow. That hurt the blank part of my body. What is it? You guys, I know, I know you got it. Um, so it's actually gonna be the center of your body. So you always wanna pass it to the center of the body, um, or in this case, if we're practicing backhand, you wanna pass to their weaker side. So their weaker side is gonna mean their dominant hand's gonna be leading. Um, already been over this, but end of the day, try to pass it more to the center of the body so they can adjust themselves and they can hit it however however way they want. You wanna leave the decision up to the opponent. Um, all right, so for the last question, all we're gonna do is just ask, um, so this is the fifth and final one. Are you guys excited? I know I am. All right, um, so why is it important to pass to the center of your partner's body? Already kind of answered that, but do you guys, you, you guys got it. I, I, I believe in you guys. Um, all right. Does anybody have a clue why you pass to the center of your partner's body? So you actually pass to the center of your partner's body, um, not only so they can be more versatile in their hits, but also so they have more power. So if you're passing to someone and it's way over here, 
when they have to dig for it, they're most likely going to be lobbing the birdie and it's not going to be that much more powerful. And the aim of the game in speed mitten is to make it as speedy as possible. So you want to throw your opponents off and try to hit it wherever they're not and that means getting a lot more speed. Um, so whether it's in forehand, whether it's in backhand, overhead, you always want to pass to the center of their body just to leave it up to the opponent's um, decision and j just so they can have more power and you can have a more effective game. Um, but in a game setting, um, you probably want to pass more to your partners for, for, for like the center of their body and then with the opponents, you always want to hit it wherever they're not. Um, so that, that pretty much wraps up all of Speedman. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope you guys had a lot of fun with it too. Um, there were a lot of really fun activities. I hope you guys really like the, the horse version of Fun in the Sun. Um, and Bullseye was pretty fun too, just for more precision reasons. Um, but it was a great class. I, I really enjoyed having you guys. Um, and I hope to teach you more non-traditional sports. Thank you.